Hey, it's me, the Recruit Boy. Uh, we recently, well, I recently did a 2K subscriber special, and damn, we already had 4K. What the fuck? Um, yeah, we got a lot of subscribers. That's that's kind of crazy. So this is a behind-the-scenes video. I'm gonna show some processes that I did, and I'm gonna also like show the Blender viewport, and you can see some outside stuff. I'll explain some things, and it's gonna be either really boring or either pretty interesting. I don't know. I'll try to make it fun. Alright, let's start with an iconic shot. Okay, so Sakuna's domain sign. It doesn't actually look like how it looks like in the video because a lot of the effects were done in post. So like the rim lights and like shading you saw, that was done in Premiere, not actually in Blender. But what was done in Blender was the stepped animation and that deep smile. The way that the line art actually works is that it's actually projected from the camera. So this allows it to have like a lot more control and variation. But this also means uh, it, it actually scans everything. So if you notice, there's no buildings in this shot because if I were to do it, it actually just lag out Blender like real bad. So edge marks, basically, uh, that's how I did the teeth. I actually labeled uh, particular lines to have uh, the line art function. You're probably wondering how I did the step effect. I actually did everything in like linear animation style with tweening, right? To save time. But to get like this little effect I did here, uh, I'd go in pose mode uh, over here. For objects, it's different. You have to go in the object menu and you go to animation. Same process there. Uh, we can set like how much distance in between the frames. So let's just set that to three. Now it generates a bunch of keyframes, right? It looks normal now because this is set to linear. So what we have to do is set this mode to constant. And now it has that effect. And that's pretty much how I do it. Let's talk about shaders, because this shot uh, is a mix of shader work, right? And I actually have to custom made some shadows. These are pieces for like actual shadow work. It's, let me take them off. It's to make it look, you know, more menacing, I suppose. And also match the more original lighting. Also added the hands as like a reference to shenanigans, because, you know, they have like little domain hands on the sign. I thought it was a neat little thing. Another important thing for this video was okay before i did this animation i did like the uh honored one animation right that uh one made in roblox studio with um they call it mood animator i'm not a big fan of mood animator uh doing stuff in roblox it's not really meant for making animations personally so i didn't get the quality i desired that's why i called that video low quality a lot of people disagree with that and call it pretty high but personally it's not up to my standards I made this video for two reasons. One, because we got a bunch of subscribers from it, so, you know, let's celebrate and, you know, make another one. I don't know if I'll make another Jujutsu Kaisen Roblox video. Uh, I only made this one because, you know, I just kind of wanted to do it as a subscriber special. Maybe it's a one-time thing, maybe I'll do it again, I'm not too sure. But, another reason I made this is because I had a really good animation that I made for one of my stick figure OCs uh, for Hyun's Dojo. It's called Toto, right? And he uses like, he's 3D, right? And he uses all like these line art modifiers. And the issue is nobody really saw that because it's original stuff. Nobody really looks at your original work. So what I had to do was if I want to show off what I learned, I had to make a Jujutsu Kaisen video about it, obviously, because that attracts attention. So thus I decided to reanimate the Mevolian Shrine because, you know, it would have been like a great way to show off all this rendering stuff that I learned over time. So, oh, another thing I should show. You're probably curious how the domain expansion shot was made. Okay, so it's a mix of like editing and actual uh, rendering. It's like a bunch of houses that converge into one. It's not actually as complicated. But what makes it complicated is the shadings are all inverse and weird and you know I'm making everything squash and stretch which like creates this weird effect and they all converge but then I added like another editing layer where I actually take the video and reverse it and put it on top to make it look more disorientating and then I actually add a third video which like changes the color palette to like the more traditional Mevolian shrine because like in the transformation there's a lot more color and it's like that because you know I thought it looked cool but I actually wanted to match up with the next scene because I actually made the Mavalent experience. Mavalent, my bad. Malevolent experience uh, white, so I had to like redo it, 
but instead of like redoing the whole animation, because I actually like this color palette, I decided to make it a separate shot and edit it into it, and you can kind of see in the animation how it kind of flashes white. So, I think that's a, a nice, nice little detail that I added. I know, I'm glazing myself a little much, but, you know, I honestly feel really proud of this. Um, um, let's see. Ooh. Okay, so the Raga regeneration scene looks a little different because the background was added in post because I was too lazy to like do animations. So I kind of just added the slashes background. I reused it from like the wa the Raga walking scene, if I can find it. Oh yeah, I called the, the scene with uh, Sukuna looking all like confident here is Sukuna Zest, so take that as you will. Okay, this scene looks complicated, but it's really simple. Let me show the rendering. So there's a bunch of particles up here, right? And then there's a spinning background over here, which gives the illusion of like a bunch of stuff going on. And then there's this guy, you know, kind of moving around. I did some squash and stretch, if you notice. It's kind of, let me find it. You see there, a bit, he squashes a bit, right? To make it look a little more dynamic. Also, I added a bit of shake on the character to show like wind going on him. And also all this uh, cloth is really doing, it's, I just shaded it smooth. But if I shade it flat, right, show all the angles, it's really just spinning. It's it's nothing too complicated. It's it's just really simple like that. But I made everything move at different frame rates, and you know I did the set technique. Oh yeah, I did like a bunch of particles for the slashes, as you can see. It's really chaotic, but also pretty simple and solid view. I think it turned out pretty well. Oh yeah, the flames are really funny because they're not actually that much effort. All they were was just like a. Um, a material that I rotated around and it had like an emission. It's just a square that's literally rotating. That's all it is. If you see here, I just rotated the square and called it a day. And then I added like a little lens flare, no, not like a little fireball effect that kind of like grew to make it look more powerful and like post. I had like a lot of videos on top of each other to make the video look more chaotic. Someone like show that power. Obviously, it's made it a little hard to read. I do recognize that. I should have definitely been a little more subtle with the effects, but... Well, I kind of wanted to go ham on this, so I went ham on this. Oh yeah, the Raga Walk. This was uh, a pretty funny one. So, this is the Raga Walk. The way that it was done is that I basically... The material for Raga... It's actually not transparent. It's just um, a gradient that goes like to a darker color. But because it matches with the background, it looks like it's transparent and looks like he's being cut up. But it's actually just a dynamic noise texture just moving around. This scene was a little complicated to do, but, you know, it actually turned out pretty well without much time. You're one Also, I know a lot of people were like really surprised at this under a week. Same, honestly. I just kind of like locked in and like finished a lot of these animations in one day. The the Sukuna with the all the slashes around him and this one was also done on the same day. I don't know, man. I just kind of really went quick with these. I suppose it's just because I'm really used to Blender. Uh, if I check my Steam, it would say 1,924.1 hours. Kind of crazy, dude. Alright, so this is a 15 minute long video. I'm definitely going to have to cut some stuff. Alright, time to answer some questions. Question 1 by this guy. Okay. What are the Blender shaders you use for your animations? Are they custom made? How do you do it? Yeah, they're custom made. I'll, I'll show them uh, later in the video what exactly I do, but they're pretty simple to make. How do you come up with the name of a group point? So the way I came up with the name was because it's actually based off a character from Rainbow Six Siege, literally just the recruit. And I just thought, hey, that would be pretty funny if I just made my entire name based off that character. So, you know, I did. Question three. Will you remember me if you become famous because your animations are just at another level? I don't know about that name, it's kind of hard to remember. Uh, I'll try though. Maybe. And this guy really, really wants to see those behind the scenes. Uh, well, here you go. And also he asked when I started animating. Uh, maybe two or three years ago? I'm not too sure. That's my guess. What do you use for editing and animating? Where do you get your ideas? Number one, uh, Premiere and Blender. Number two, I don't know, they kind of come to me while working. 
Alright, this guy, not a question, but can he make it behind the seat? Anyway, next question, do you have a Roblox game you work on? Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm not working on anything. If you were to make a Roblox game, what type of game would you make? Honestly, I just want to make a, a horror action FPS, I think that'd be kind of cool. But I'm not really much of a developer, so I can't really do that. I tried it before, but I don't think it's my thing. Who is your favorite fictional character? Uh, Black Chainsaw. Could you make a behind the scenes? Next question, do you use Premiere Pro for any of the actual animations or is it just for edit? Uh, as I explained, I use it for like effects and generally color grading. If you had a custom domain, would be a uh, Blender Cube. How do you make animations? Um, I kind of showed a bit of it, but uh, it takes a lot of time and effort and you have to study a bit from other people. A few simple animation tutorials should get you on the road. I recommend practicing with any rig you can find. Do you plan on making more Roblox education posts? I have no idea. What other future projects I have planned? Uh, I have something I planned with a couple friends. I'm not sure if I'm actually gonna like continue onto it, but we're you know we're kind of considering it. Are you really yourself? Look at your hands right now. Are you in control of you? Now consider this question. Do you think seals are silly? Anyway, next question. How late do I stay up working on animations? Uh, my sleep schedule is so damn inconsistent. Did you mix some studio and some of your art for your Maharaga video? Uh, most of it was done in Blender and just imported into uh, Premiere, and that's pretty much how I did it. Do you still dream of the incident? No. What do you lose? Yes. More accessories than when? Later. Do the line art style I did in my video, if you want to replicate that. Uh, here's how I did it. So I go into here, you can either do scene line art or collection line art. Collection line art will basically just only do line art for a group, and you can select which group is that. Scene line art will affect everything. Uh, let's do scene line art. Okay. So for scene line art, it's projected from the camera, you can see that. Uh, if I move the camera away, it actually makes the lines disappear. That's one thing you gotta know. Mm -hmm. Now we can add, we can change the thickness over here. Then we can add modifiers. I usually like to use the noise modifier. And I like to mess around with the scale, the noise scale. And then its thickness should also be there. And basically the noise scale like kind of like shows how much variation there'll be and you have like the thickness over here and then every frame it'll basically now have random noise and it gives like this kind of line art effect now i can reduce the thickness or reduce the noise scale so it doesn't move as much and that's kind of how i get my general effects for the video um there's also some settings for the line art so if you just want like the silhouette of the thing, you can set it to silhouette mode where you remove the creases and that's usually good enough. And also this also determines the silhouette and you could do individual silhouettes. So if I have like two objects here, let me show this. So if it's a single silhouette, it'll kind of just combine the whole thing, right? But because we had individual silhouettes, it'll have a separate thing, like look. Silhouette. Individual silhouette. Yeah, oh yeah, if you want to know the shaders, I can explain that. So I go to shading. Oh, that went a little slow. Okay, so my shaders are really simple. Literally, yeah, just do this. Shader to RGB node. Right, apply that, and then you add a color ramp. won't believe it I just set this to constant oh this is blender 4.2 so things look a little weird but that's kind of how it's done and from the camera it should look a little good it's a little weird because blender has like these extra shadow stuff but yeah that's kind of how I do it this is the new version of blender so Oh yeah, here's the actual shading thing, and I can tweak it around, depending on the lighting conditions. 
So yeah, hopefully you learned something. I don't know if you did, but yeah.